Now, a manhunt continues for one of the two convicted criminals who escaped from Ngandla and Freyhead Correctional Centers this week. Just yesterday, police re-arrested 34-year-old Siabongas Khakhane, who is serving a 16-year imprisonment for housebreaking and theft. But the second escape peep, Pamantla Gift Smelan, is still at large. So let's get some updates now from Correctional Services spokesperson Singabako Ngumalo, who joins me right now for the very latest regarding this story. Singabako, thank you so much for your time and a very Warm good morning to you. What are the circumstances um, surrounding the escape of these two inmates? Do you understand exactly what happened when they escaped? A very good morning, and thank you for having us. Uh, we can confirm that uh, indeed Siabongas Kakane is back in our care. He appeared in court yesterday for charges of uh, escaping from lawful custody. He was then transferred to another correctional facility. So the hunt is still on for Spamanda Gift Melani, and uh, we will find him. Um, uh, it, it may not be like now, but definitely we will find him. And um, as a department, we launched an investigation to look at um, how the whole thing happened, because the two managed to escape when they were out with the spans. Spans are working teams, and there were officials guiding them. So the investigation must then assist us in terms of determining how, uh, how was it possible that the two could escape? And um, also the officials involved, the role that they played there in, in terms of ensuring that inmates are, 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 are secured and guarded at all times. Mm. So, but as a department, that's where we are at the moment. Yeah. We also have to say that Paman Melani um, escaped while serving uh, Singabakwe, a two-year uh, sentence for housebreaking and uh, theft. Uh, he's been apprehended uh, since last week, still at large. I mean, uh, w what is your appeal to the community in terms of assisting you in making sure that he is rearrested? You mentioned that you're confident you will find him, not today perhaps, but you will find him. But what's the role here of then of community members in in terms of working alongside the police? Um, we are appealing to the public to assist us in this regard. We've seen it working in the past where in, uh, the public will give us leads which will uh, assist us in terms of um, rearresting the suspects. So even with this particular case, the two uh, come from the communities where they were incarcerated. So their movements would be known some of the people that they will come into contact with it would be in a position to identify them. Uh, but even if they were to move to other areas, uh, we are able to find leads. Hence, as a department, we'll, we are confident that uh, we'll definitely find them. And, um, but here, what's important is that um, aiding someone who has escaped from lawful custody is a danger. You may think you're assisting, you are definitely not. That person could put your life in danger, other people's lives in danger, even your family. So as a department, we'll continue to appeal to everyone that may have information to say, a report to the nearest police station. You may not even have to disclose of who you are. Just give us information. We'll then effect an arrest working together with other law enforcement agencies. Yeah. Are you able to share with us what the numbers are looking like in terms of inmates that escape from prison, at least in the past financial year? I mean, out of a total of the inmates that you have, which I understand is approximately 157,000 or so, how many inmates have escaped or at least attempted to? Um, all that I can reveal, the numbers that I have is that um, uh, we have managed to rearrest 99% uh, of people who have escaped from our facilities. Mm. And um, uh, as a department, we say even if, yes, we're able to rearrest them, but our mission is to make it impossible for them to escape. Hence, we always launch investigations there because they then assist us to even plan for the future. So um, our focus is to say, how do we make it impossible for people to escape? What measures do they use? Uh, the mode of operandi changes all the time uh, as crime changes. So we are also trying to be abreast in terms of some of the developments, you know, the tools that inmates will use and how those get to be uh, smuggled into our facilities. So as a department, it, uh, our action do not start when someone has escaped. We always have to go back. How, how was it possible? What tools were, were, were smuggled in? 
the people that may have assisted that particular escape. So there's quite a lot of things that we mm. always have to look at. Yeah, and obviously with the Tabo Besta case and saga um, in, in our headlines, you can imagine uh, quite captivating for South Africans to follow through with the case and also seeing the role that some of the law enforcement can play, as you mentioned, in assisting with aiding a convict or an inmate to escape. Are you at all worried that um, you know some of your own internally may be a part of assisting inmates to escape? I mean, what are you doing to strengthen security as well as uh, procedures and processes uh, when it comes to your very own internal employees and staff uh, in as far as guarding inmates? Uh, one of the things that we picked up is that uh, non-adherence to uh, standard uh, operating procedures is, you know, is a factor. And we always, you know, remind officials in terms of what is it that is expected of them. And if it means taking them for refresher courses, we do that. But what, what is also important, the reason why we launched this investigation is to also pick up in case it is a case of uh, that goes beyond just non-adherence to standard operating procedures to say are uh, other factors at play here. And um, so that we can, we can deal, you know, with those. And should we find that... Uh, officials drop the ball, we deal with them. But uh, in most of the investigations that uh, we've conducted, you find that at times it's an act of negligence. Yes, yeah, you, will take, uh, you will take action against the official involved, all officials involved. But what remains critical is to say, who are the players? Who are these people who assist or who make it possible for people you know, to escape? The type of planning that they embark upon. And some of those people find that they are outside of our facilities. Some of the items that are brought into our facilities. And we'll even look for those people who brought, you know, those items and deal with them. So that um, we can even send, a, you know, a clear message out there to say, uh, assisting someone to escape from lawful custody is a criminal offence and such people must be dealt with. Hence, we are following the case of Tabo Pesa with keen interest and all those who were identified, you know, to have played a part there must be dealt with, you know, following, you know, the law. As a department, our goal is to say when people are brought to us to serve sentences, let them serve sentences, let them be rehabilitated so that by the time they leave our facilities, they are ready to reintegrate back in society as people who can now start living as normal human beings, people who we can say they are able to follow the law. Well, we leave it there, Singabaku Ngomalun. Thank you so much for speaking to us and giving us this update. Uh, that is Correctional Services spokesperson Singabaku Ngomalun. Just to refresh, of course, uh, that uh, one of those two escapees has been re-arrested. We understand that it was two prisoners who escaped this week. Uh, one uh, was at uh, Nkanda, one of the facilities there, the other in Freyhead. Uh, but we understand that when it comes to one particular, uh, you know, inmate, his name being Siabongas Khakhani, he was there for re-arrested on Wednesday morning out in Nkandla. But when it comes to Spamantla gift, uh, Smelan, he's still out, uh, of course, uh, and um, he is being sought after by the correctional services and, of course, the appeal there being not to aid an inmate or rather, uh, you know, a, a criminal to, of course, continue, uh, you know, being uh, outside of uh, prison, but rather to uh, assist the police and law enforcement in bringing them back into uh, the correctional centre because if you do so, there are criminal criminal offences that you may face. There's a criminal offence and there are charges uh, that you may face there as well. So, of course, so all my thanks to Singapore for speaking to me this morning.